You're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. You'll be amazed at all these wild but true situations that others have found themselves in. Because on this show, you'll hear uncensored, unbelievable stories from the world of real estate. I'm Lee Brown. Let's dive right in. Before you get the rest of the story, I'd love to share a quick message from today's sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Follow Up Boss, one of the leading CRMs, client relationship managers for residential real real estate, tons of top producing agents, and some of the fastest growing teams out there are using follow-up balls to increase lead conversion, eliminate busy work that you're not doing anyway, and frankly, deliver a higher class experience in real estate to everybody who chooses you as their realtor of choice. So if you're going to keep listening to this, which I know you will, there's more information and a personal review of follow-up balls. For more information, go to followupballs.com slash crazy. Hello, friends. I'm Lee Brown. This is Crazy Shit in Real Estate. Today, you're going to get to learn from Tate Seamer. He is out in the Utah real estate market. He's done real estate in a couple of different ways. Currently, he's an investor of apartments. But especially if you're the person who likes to learn things, he's got some great information for you on some resources that he learned from. I took a bunch of notes in this episode. I hope you will as well. So make sure you stay tuned in. Give us some likes and comments, and I'll see you on the other side. All right. Well, I see how you got all those nice mountains behind you. Tell us a little bit about Tate, where you're located. Give us a little yeah. bit of background. Yeah, that's Salt Lake City behind me. And I've been here, I've lived here for 22 years. I'm originally from Cincinnati, moved here when I was 26, and have moved here for the skiing and got into real estate in 06 and did the single family thing for quite a while. And really about four years ago, started to expand our business model into a number of different things and had some, had some highs and some lows. And so I've got some things to share with you as far as all that kind of that progression went. But yeah, I mean, an avid skier, avid mountain biker, love to camp and just super outdoorsy. I'm single dude, no kids, have a little dog named Joey and (laughs) <laughs> we, we do really well together. And I love apartment syndication. I love what we're doing. So what did you do before you started messing with real estate in 06? Photography. I was a professional photographer. It was ski photography and wedding and portrait photography. So do you no. still do that? Or were you just sick no. of it and looking for something else to do? Yeah. Sick of it, looking for something else to do, basically. Yeah. Is it I mean, that grind? A lot of people who come to real estate come here because they just can't take whatever grind they're in anymore. And the real estate grind is a lot of hard work, but it's different every day. And there's a thousand yep. different directions you can go in. Yep. And so just so you know, my audience is a mix of real estate professionals and then what I call normal people. So people that are not in real estate, but they're either investing in it or they're around it. And for a lot of real estate professionals, they can get burned out in the grind of selling houses, like as an actual practicing realtor, but they love real estate and they know Mm. it to a large extent. So they're always curious about the other pathways that are out there. But many of my listeners and my viewers, hey, y'all know who you're talking about. They get really overcome by fear and they don't know how to jump pathways, how to try another pathway without going broke without being in a flat panic. So I'm curious as to how you made the transition. So talk to us a little bit about 2006. What did you do for education? Was it a mentor? Was it Mm -hmm. a CD program? What was it, Tate? Yeah. um, I actually was sitting in my buddy's basement one day and his roommate was attending an investment course and was flipping a triplex in Salt Lake City here and had some partners. And I had never considered doing anything like that. It was never on my radar at all. I never knew anyone that did anything like that before. And to me, it was just like a revelation that you could do something like that. So I went and took this investor course, which was very basic and flipping 101 kind of thing. And got just jumped in from there, started flipping houses myself, and then got my real estate license because I thought that was the thing to do. And started working for other investors. And then the crash happened. And I never really hit my stride 
very well, so to speak, and never really fell in love with what I was doing in the 06 through 08 time. And I was kind of burnt out actually when the crash happened. And I really swore off real estate at that point, kind of forever and went back to photography and did a few other business things. And my longtime boss and partner in photography, his name's Carl York. He and I started flipping houses in 2011, 2012 again, (laughs) and did that whole thing for six years, like hard, hard, hard. What we thought was hard, taking all of the money that we could round up of our own and all of the time that we could round up on our own and throw that at one, maybe two or three houses at a time and do the very best we could with each one of those houses. Well, that's not very scalable. And it's a lot of hard work. That's a lot of risk. And it's just at the end of the day, you do it five, six years and you start looking for other stuff and you start looking to expand. And I started going to some real estate investor association meetings, which was huge for me here locally. That really got me into other thought leadership areas, podcasts, audiobooks, and started to really look at like what else can we be doing? And from there, we jumped into a number of different ventures and uh, some of which went very well and a couple of which went very, very badly. And now we're kind of on to, as a result of jumping into three or four different pools at one time and getting burned in one of them or two of them, we have really picked our lane in the commercial multifamily space in the apartment syndication world. And so we are currently on 300 and uh, I think 62 doors in Ohio and Oklahoma City and Utah. And then we have about 250 under contract right now that we're working on getting closed. So it's been a really fun venture. It's been an adventure though. I'll say that. So for those of y'all that are new to the podcast, or you might be new-ish to real estate investing, just a little insight. Whenever we Mm -hmm. refer to doors, that's a separate rentable unit. And so you have two doors that could be a duplex, or it could be two single family houses, a hundred doors could be a large apartment complex, and it could be just your portfolio of different properties. So each door equals a tenant conglomeration of some sort. So just that's your little reminder there. So before we dig into what you're doing now and your story that you've, I know you've got ready for the podcast, I know that my listeners are a bunch of education junkies and they're very probably curious about what podcasts that you were mentioning and what books that you were listening to yeah. on Audible as you were getting into that space. So any specific recommendations you'd like? To Absolutely. Make? Yes. The book by Lance Edwards on Audible called How to Make Big Money in Small Apartments was game-changing for me. It was an absolute paradigm setter and paradigm shifter for me. And Lance is great, comes from deep Texas, has a really thick Texas accent, and he talks about when he started his real estate business, and I love him. And he makes the whole thing really fun, but it's a great 30,000-foot view of the whole apartment investing game and the hows, the whys, the who's. He he simplifies it so that it's digestible and understandable and makes you feel like you can do it. And that to me was everything. Podcasts, I'll just mention my own, the apartment guys, but there's been others. Adam Adams was huge in my life. And I'll say Michael Blanc, who is a pretty famous apartment syndicator. He puts on a great annual event that's been game-changing for me. I met one of my two business partners at that event two years ago. And so these conferences, guys, these national conferences are so worth going to. They will change your life. And if you can, buy the VIP pass because that'll even change your life more. And we can't say that enough. You can do a lot of stuff on Zoom, y'all. You can do a lot of stuff on podcasts and books and external sources. Nothing replaces the face-to-face connection. So if you are somebody who's afraid of travel, afraid of other people, you've got to overcome that fear because you're going to miss the best connections ever. And Tate just told you, I mean, at the conference, he went for the education and came away with a partner. And that's something that would never have happened in a one-way or even a two-way video environment. 
So yeah. anyway, thank you for sharing those resources. I specifically wrote down Lance Edwards because yeah. I'm a small apartment girl myself. So I want to go find out what he's got to share to make myself better. I'm super excited now. And as you know, the premise of the show is crazy shit in real estate. And when you do flips and when you have bought your own property and when you do apartments and all other kinds of things in real estate, you have to have come across some scenario that to this day, you still can't believe you survived it. You still mm -hmm. can't believe it ever happened. So yeah. we're all ears. Yeah, I've got it. So <laughs> one of the first real estate investor association meetings I went to was there was a speaker, guest speaker, and he was giving a presentation on how he went from flipping single family houses to being a developer, a small developer. And what he had done was bought infill pieces, like little lots that either had tear down homes on them or lots that were vacant already and had them permitted for small townhome developments. Mm -hmm. So he would buy quarter acre, third acre lots and have them entitled with building plans. And then he would sell those projects often to other investors, or he would build them himself. And so... I met him there, heard him speak, was inspired. And my partner and I went to lunch with him the next week, took us around and showed us a few projects. And next thing we know, we were buying two lots that had building plans for townhomes on them. And I'll just say that that was probably the last thing, like getting them under contract was probably the last thing that went well on these projects. Everything from this point forward was a disaster, including getting the financing. Well, getting the hard money was relatively easy, but getting the construction loan to build these things was a bear. It was like pounding a round hole into a square peg or whatever, however that goes. You know what I mean? <laughs> square peg, round hole. And we had a bank that was just awful to work with. We hired the builder that this developer recommended to us, and we had done some due diligence on them and seen their work, but they were just terrible. And I hate to throw other people under the bus and I ultimately take full responsibility for these projects because the buck stops with me. But at the same time, who we hired, I'll take responsibility for us hiring very, very poorly. And we didn't realize how bad things were with them until about six months into the project when we had broken ground we had already dug for, we had so many weird things happen. Like we started digging on this vacant lot and there was a foundation like 25 feet down that had to be removed oh. that cost an extra $50,000. We were over budget from day one and never came back. And these builders talked us, they wanted to save some money and in the budget, kind of. And talked us into changing the windows that were in the plans to vinyl windows instead of the clad windows that were called for, and also talked us into changing the shape and the size of them. And it turns out we were, well, we knew this, but we were in a historic district and the historic district didn't like the window thing very much. Okay. So I told y'all that I would do a review of follow-up boss, you know, because I'm your friend in real estate and I did. Now, you know, there's a blue million CRM out there. I mean, if you go to any Facebook group, every realtor is like, which one should I use? Which one should I use? And you know that these CRM, which are client relationship managers or customer relationship manager, whatever you want to call it, it's truly a system that's just designed to help you know what to do next because you're very busy and you're a multitasker in real estate with all those different tasks and balls up in the air. You need something to help you stay on track. And that's what Follow Up Boss does. Now, when you save a name and a phone number in there, that is basically a Rolodex. Follow Up Boss is going to take the names and phone numbers and also help you know what to do next so you can maintain these relationships with your neighbors. Because that's what this is about. Real estate is not about serving just prospects and clients. It's about taking great care of your neighbor's needs in real estate. And if you'll use a tool like Follow Up Boss, 
where they remember you. Oh, they might even call you when they're ready to buy or sell again, or when their mom and daddy do, or their best friend or their kid, and you want to be top of mind. That's what a product like Follow Up Boss will do for you. Truly, it's going to change your business when you start paying better attention to people. They don't have to know you use Follow Up Boss, but they'll totally understand that they are being heard by you. So now there's a free trial for my people because you're loved. Go to followupboss.com slash crazy. No credit card is required. And frankly, because you're my people and we made an ask for you, Follow Up Boss said, yes, you get double the free trial. That's actually enough time to log in, put some pieces in it and watch it change your business as it has for so many realtors and teams nationwide. Again, go to followupboss.com slash crazy to start your free trial today. That they did. <laughs> so, the overlay will kill you. So we ended up, long story short, ended up having to retrofit our entire building, about 50 plus windows with the correct windows that put us $350,000 behind. In the meantime, we're also losing time. We not to get too dark with this, but at one point there was a dead body found in the building after framing. What? Uh, like a fresh with, dead body? Yes. Yep. I had luckily was not there and the builder found it and took care of it. And we had very little to do with that luckily, but it was little things like the toilet flanges came up in the garage instead of the bathroom. They didn't get a right. No big deal. Right. They didn't get a roof on for most of the winter. And we had tons of pretty bad water damage in the framing. The framing was wrong. It just, the list goes on and on and on. And at the end of the day, it took us two and a half years to complete these things, which tells you how awful they were. We did two projects. We built a set of three on one lot and a set of three on another lot. They were absolutely beautiful. They're million dollar condos in Salt Lake City or townhomes rather. And they're 3000 plus square feet, two car garages, gorgeous high ceilings, floor to ceiling windows, just stunning. However, (laughs) we got our butts kicked and we lost a ton of money on them. Here's the twist is in the meantime, the same developer brought us our first apartment building, a 12 unit in South Salt Lake. That was a great opportunity. It was half vacant. The other half weren't paying. They were month to month. So it was an opportunity for us to go in, do a pretty much like a hard money sort of deal and flip the entire building. We did a head to toe remodel on this thing eco-friendly roofing, like TPO membrane roofing, HVAC windows, flooring, did very well on that and made about 300 grand in about a year on that project on 12 units and wish we could have kept it actually. And that started us on our multifamily journey. And while we were building these townhomes, we were actually trying to sell them as is at one point just to get out of them. And we had an agent come through and show them to us. We got to talking and what are you up to these days kind of thing. And yeah, we're looking for apartments. If you happen to know of anything, oh yeah, we've got an apartment that just coming back on the market. You ought to come check it out. So we ended up going to check it out and it's our 20 unit that we are in the process of selling now after taking it full cycle and we'll make a million and a half on it after all said and done. And then we're into... I think we're up to six communities now that are 50 plus units in Columbus and Oklahoma City. So the hell, like the living, breathing, awful hell of those townhomes were what brought us to our next step, which is like the happiest I've ever been. And I feel more on purpose and more on track than I ever have been in my life. So It's just entrepreneurship is a twisty, turny road. It's not a straight line at all, in my opinion. And we wouldn't want it to be, right? Because (laughs) this out on all the fun. So I got to dig into a couple of things in that pathway there. The first one is people. This is why you call a realtor, because if there wasn't an agent involved on those townhouses, Kate wouldn't have known about the next apartment complex. 
So mm-hmm. it's more than just who you hire, it's the conversations you have with each other. And we kind of all have to think in that space. It's not just the opportunity we have in front of us today. It's what else are we doing and what else does somebody else know about and that expansive thinking. So we do talk to a lot of investors, Tate, and you know this, they don't really want to mess with realtors and with agents because they feel like it's a fly in the ointment, but it doesn't have to be that way if you're mm-hmm. talking to somebody who understands the investor space. The second yeah. thing I have to tell you I'm fixated on is this 25 foot below ground foundation. I mean, what the heck is going on with the water table out there that you could have a foundation that low? How'd that happen? It's not. I don't low. know. Actually, that's crazy to me too, because our water table's high here. Um, I don't get it. So <laughs> it an ancient Indian burial ground or something, because that's where my mind goes immediately. It wasn't, um, I don't think it was a burial ground. I think it was a house and it was right next to this lot was right next to an old governor's mansion. And I think it was just a place that long ago had been torn down. I don't quite get it. I never like saw it. So let's put it that way. One of the things that we have to take total responsibility for is not being on the job site more. And that lended to a lot of other problems and probably would have, we would have cut to the chase with this first builder faster than we did and parted ways with them. But honestly, the second builder we hired wasn't much better. Sometimes you just, if you don't have anything nice to say, you don't say anything at all. But it does give us a reminder, listeners and viewers, hey, if you have young people in your life that have any capability with their hands, they should be going into the building trades. We've got a huge shortage in the building trades nationally. Mm -hmm. But listen to Tate. He had two builders in a row that were going to make great money building property. And had they been better at their trade craft and more diligent in taking care of the external and the final quality, Mm -hmm. they may have had more business down the road. But think about the young people you know. Maybe they could be filling this gap for us. And that's not just in North Carolina where I am or Utah where Tate is, that's where you are. So think yep. about this. And by the way, they could probably find some old line builder who's amazing, who would love an apprentice if they want to go yes. learn the craft. But look at their, yes. their past reputation. Look at the Better Business Bureau. Talk to their past clients and see what their reputation is in the market before you marry them together in an apprentice way. So I had to toss that out there because... Mm-hmm. I would love nothing more than if every builder were of a high level of expertise and competence, because there's such an open market for that right now. So anyway, without any more rabbit holing. So Tate, tell us what you're doing right now. You said you've moved into some other markets. Where do you find your opportunities besides the going to conferences, going to the Real Estate Investors Association, talking to realtors? Do you mm-hmm. reach out to the public? What's the best advice you would give to our listeners and viewers who are saying, I want to do what Tate does? Yeah. So again, the Lance Edwards book will like, it's seriously, it's like a step-by-step manual for you, but it'll really deep dive into this. But Basically, to answer your question about where we get deals, where we source deals, almost all of our deals come through brokers and they're almost all off market, quote unquote, pocket listings, deals that brokers know of the seller, knows the seller wants to sell, says to the seller, Hey, I think I can bring you a buyer. Are you up for that? That sort of thing. And we've really honed in on Columbus, Ohio, and Oklahoma City for a lot of the same reasons. They're just great fundamental multifamily investing markets. The price per door is a great price per door compared to what you can rent your price per door or each door for, right? Like not to get too in the weeds with that stuff, but the return on your dollar is good in those markets and you can cash flow deals. Basically, we can buy communities that pay the debt service, pay our investors obviously pay the expenses of the community as well and pay our investors nice returns. And that's something we can't do in Utah, by the way, because the prices are so high here and cap rates are so low. And I don't want to like open up that can of worms. But for those of you that know the cap rate equation, it's cap rates in Utah are extremely low. Cap rates in Columbus and Oklahoma City are closer to like the six and a half range, which is where we kind of need to be to make our deals pencil. And for the record, if you don't know what cap rates are, if you don't know cash on cash return, 
I highly recommend the Bigger Pockets podcast. Bigger mm-hmm. Pockets has an episode pretty much for every one of these topics and it drills yep. in nicely so that you won't get overloaded. So definitely check out Bigger Pockets and also pay attention to the migration rates in different states. Because if you're curious mm-hmm. as to why Utah's gone really expensive, look at the net migration rates of who's coming into the state. Right. You've got big money flowing in from the West Coast. It's the same thing that's happened to Austin, Texas. We've watched it happen all over Idaho. Mm -hmm. And when you see those numbers, when the net migration goes up, especially with cash, it's going to make things more expensive. And so just be that person who's looking for additional marketplaces. And remember that just because everybody else isn't there today, it doesn't mean it's not a great market. You just want to look at the numbers. And as was said on many of my different episodes by every investor I know, the numbers will tell the story. And so Mm -hmm. just let that guide your pathway as you're an investor. Tate, any last little bits you want our people to leave this episode with besides the fact that you're giving them some great insights on, frankly, a lot of different areas today? Yeah, I would say like, Kind of the secret sauce in this space. If you're interested in the real estate space, Lee is here to talk to you and help you. I am as well. But the best thing that you can really do is to know yourself and take a solid self-assessment of what your superpowers are and bring that to your team, your business, right? Like figure out how you can best maximize the value of that superpower and The nice thing about apartment syndication is that it's a team sport and there's lots of roles for different types of people in these investments. And then whatever you do, whatever you pick, like once you pick your lane, just be all in. There's no substitute for 100% commitment and like being all in on whatever you're doing. If you can't quit your day job and that sort of thing, that's okay, but be all in on your day job too. Like be all in on all of it and it will turn out well for you. So, well, let's just point out we're recording this in October of 2021. There are millions of people in the United States right now that are mulling what that full time job future looks like based Mm -hmm. on what's happening in DC. So, if you're the person who doesn't want to be mandated as to what you have to do and don't have to do, maybe now's the time to get yourself educated and learn how to go do something different in the marketplace where you don't have to be under somebody else's thumb. And what do you think about that, Tate? I mean, high five th- on that. High five. Yeah. There's nothing like working for yourself if you're wired that way. And not all of us are. Like The world needs great employees and great workers and great tacticians and great managers and all of that, right? the world also needs great business owners. And some of us are wired that way. And so, yeah, if you feel like you're one of those people, now's a great time to make a jump. And you can also not be the person who wants to own the business, who wants to learn from and partner with that entrepreneurial mindset. Again, away from big corporate rules and mandates and more toward how we support each other in growth. And that doesn't mean you have to be at the helm. It could just mean you're on the ship. So Tate, thank you for coming on the show and giving us a ton of different insights. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, my pleasure, Lee. It was wonderful. It was kind of fun to revisit some of that stuff. And hopefully listeners just take away, like things can get really, really dark and things got really dark for us. And it really came down to like just a lot of faith that things were going to work out. If you're in one of those spots where you just can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I was there for two years and it's horrific. I know that. And this too shall pass, right? And God's big enough to handle our business prayers too, right? We forget that sometimes if you live a life of faith, you think it's not okay to ask for God's providence and cover on your business. It's totally okay because Mm -hmm. faith is generally what gets people to get through to the other side somehow, some way. So thank you for that Mm -hmm. reminder because A lot of people have their dark moments. They don't tell anybody else about it, but you got to keep going, guys. One foot in front of the other. All of Tate's links and contact information, everything is in the show notes for this episode. So if you have questions about Utah or you want to know how to find markets, you want to find out about how to work with him in syndication, all that information is available. Tate, thank you for coming on the show one more time. My pleasure. Awesome. Good stuff. 
All right, guys, you know the rules. Five stars, subscribe, leave a nice little comment, tell Tate what you appreciated about this episode. And more importantly, make sure that you check out our next episode because we'll see you next time. Okay, now don't forget to go try follow-up boss so that your business can continue to expand in professionalism and then you can meet some more crazy people yourself. I really appreciate follow-up boss sponsoring this episode, but mainly I appreciate them for giving y'all double the free trial time with no credit card required. So make sure you go to followupboss.com slash crazy and then let me know what you think. I'll see you guys next time. As always, I'm so super thrilled that you joined in for more crazy shit. And if you are a realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular human being who happens to have an unbelievable story that you need to tell the world about, or frankly, you just need to one up the story you just heard, then make sure to DM me on Instagram at Lee Thomas Brown or tweet me at Lee Brown or frankly, any social network where you hang out. I'm there. And if you had some fun, then you totally won't just subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. 